What's cracking guys? Omar Esau here back with another video. In this video today, I'm talking about the number one mistake people make when they attempt to do high volume training. You guys already know that I'm a big fan of high volume training. I think there is a correlation between hypertrophy, how much muscle you build, and volume, the total volume you do in any given workout. But there is a problem. How exactly do we measure this volume? For a lot of people, they would try and take a look at total volume load. This means the total amount of load lifted in any given workout. And so if we take a look at one movement, let's say the leg press you did, uh, the leg press and a leg workout, and we take a look at the total volume load for the leg press, we do the sets times the reps times the load lifted. And so if you did 10 sets of 10, so 10 sets of 10 repetitions, that's 100 total reps. And let's say that the load lifted on every single set was 100 pounds. Okay, so that's 10,000 pounds. That's the total volume load for the leg press. But is 10,000 pounds on the leg press the same as the squat? I would argue no when it comes to the training effect because we need to measure the intensity in that set. And I don't you know, mean the weight lifted. What I'm talking about is the actual intensity of that set. How close were you to failure? And so total volume load can be useful if you're comparing exercise to exercise, but what if you just want a good rough approximation of how effective your workout was? Instead, you should take a look at the number of hard working sets that you did in that workout. And there's actually research to support this. You see Dr. Mike Zordos, I have to shout him out. He's part of Mass Monthly Applications and Strength Sports. I'm gonna link that in the description because it's from the latest issue. He took a look at 14 studies which measured people that actually lifted and the idea was can you measure volume according to the number of hard working sets an individual did in a workout and the answer actually is it's a pretty reliable indicator now i say hard working sets because they are different than a regular set that is because you have to hit a certain amount of rpe and you have to do a certain amount of repetitions you have to do at least six repetitions in that set and the RP has to be at least seven. If RP confuses you, you can think about it like reps in reserve. How many good reps you had left in the tank before you reached absolute failure. So an RP seven is actually just an RIR reps in reserve of three, which means you could have done only three more good reps until you would have reached failure. And so this means each set has to be relatively difficult. And again, we're not talking about the intensity of the load lifted. So we're not talking about whether you did 200 pounds or 300 pounds. We're talking about in that particular set, how close were you to failure? And the research indicates that training basically pretty intensely is a good indicator to add up your total volume because you reach a certain threshold of intensity or effort in that set. And so what that means is you can compare workout to workout based just purely on total amount of hard working sets. So instead of thinking about adding more fluff volume, so you think, shit, I just gotta do more total repetitions in this workout and I'll build more muscle. Instead, think to yourself, how many hard working sets have I done in this workout? And then in the next one, can I beat that? Or in a month's time or several months time, you wanna eventually be doing more and more hard working sets. So you need to reach a certain amount of RPE and you need to do a certain amount of repetitions. If I really wanted to express this in a certain way, I would say the number one mistake people make would be doing junk sets, so fluff sets, where you are adding more volume, but it's not quality volume, you know? Let's say you're doing 30 pounds on the bicep curls, and you're like, shit, I'll do this for three sets of 15, but each set of 15 is like an RP4, where again, it's the end of the workout, you're not really thinking about it too much. Do you think that's gonna have the same training effect as doing one extra hard set where you truly go two reps short of failure, or one rep short of failure on the bicep curl? Focus instead on quality of volume and then increasing that quality volume. So think about going to a certain RP, really training with a certain level of intensity, and then increasing the total amount of sets you do like that over time. And in that way, that's far more reliable. So maybe we should stop thinking about total volume load because again, comparing exercise to exercise gets really tricky. And some machines, it's very, it's very easy to sneak up when we talk about the total amount of volume load you're using. So instead, think about hard working sets. Anyways, guys, just thought I'd make this video all about this because I know people have questions when it comes to volume or getting in quality volume as I talk about how do I measure it? What should I focus on? So this frames it in the proper context. Anyways, I got to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, if you thought to yourself, hmm, I learned something, make sure to like the damn video and I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next one.
Peace. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.